shoulder to shoulder. Shout, shout, out with your song, cry with the wind, for the dawn is breaking. March, march, swing you along, why go down and hold it waking? Firm in reliance, love and defiance, love in hope, for sure is the end. March, march, many as one, shoulder to shoulder and friend to friend. Mrs. Farley, please, hurry. We're late already. I've got my tickets, Mrs. Farley. Do <coughs> you know what this is? It's my license. From the right honourable cat and mouse McKenna. No, I shan't be putting it up for auction because you've given over 300 pounds already today. But if anybody wants to buy it, it's up for sale. You know, I've been called impudent for putting my license up for auction. Well, at least I shan't be idle. At least I shall be earning some money when I'm back in prison. Miss Kenny, I'll give you five pounds. From Uncle Sam. Nice an American. No, I shan't take more. Because I want the lies and the hypocrisy of this liberal government to be exposed to the world. Oh, well, they call themselves liberal. I got us a box, Mrs. Farley, so that you could hear the speakers. The great liberal principle. The freedom of the subject. You know, people say, why is that? What is it then? That man or who? It's Inspector Riley. Oh, just walk off. Excuse me, ladies. Mrs. Pankhurst. I have orders to take you into custody. And starts to talk about his great liberal principles. Then my friend here, who just bought my license, can stand up, hold up this license, and say yes. And here is a bit of it. <laughs> Women! Women, they are arresting me! Let me go! 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 Let her go! No! Make way! Please, I must warn you, ladies and gentlemen, you're obstructing an officer. Oh, Army, he'd be a general and really smart. <laughs> there she is, then. It's Nora Smythe, dear. Hello, Nora. Hello. I brought some things for you for the meeting. You know, I promised. You will go together. Thank you, Mrs. Payne. She's looking better, isn't she? Yes, heaps. It's Mrs. Payne's delicious food. Oh, rats. She's amazing, you know. Her husband's an epileptic, so she has to keep them both. What have you got? Things we use for charades. 
I thought this one might do for you, so the police won't recognize you until you speak. I say, can you bear to? It smells awfully of mothballs, I'm afraid. But it's marvelous. How does it look? Pretty awful. <laughs> does it? <laughs> not so bad. It makes me look quite different, I must say that. You won't mind if I take it off in Trafalgar Square when I have to speak. Oh, you don't have to because I brought it. But I want to. It'll be extremely useful. I'll never get through the police without. Well, if you want. I like your room. What a lot of flowers. Yes. People bring them. Everyone is very kind. Um, I meant to ask, if you needed anyone, I'd like to work in the East End. Oh, the others are all right. Mrs. Pankhurst. I like the way you do things. I like the people, too. Thank you. Well, I don't know if I'd be much use. Oh, you would. You will. Right. Sylvia! You ready, mate? and Melvina, they're coming too. Sylvia, are you ready? Oh, hi, Laura. Hello. Oh, what's happening here? What do you think of it? Oh, I'm so awake. <laughs> Nora's brought a whole box of things for charades. Hey, hey Ellie, did you look at this lot? Uh, it's everything in here. This what's this? How about that? Thing? <laughs> That's a good one. Keep it. <laughs> you know when we could have used all this stuff, don't you? Last week after that Bromley Town Hall meeting, mm. the coppers broke it up and chased us down an alley. Sylvia and me and Zelly in the stable. Yeah, I got fleas, too, from that straw. There was this couple with his bullseye lantern searching up and down the street. <laughs> Melvina sneaked out at the back and got us away. Well, it could have been bad for Sylvia, being a mouse at present. The Kenna's just waiting to slap her back into Holloway as soon as she steps out of line. Ooh, there's my taxi. Oh, Sylvia, you are ready. Will you take all of us? I'm nearly ready. Mm. Well, we'd better ask him about the banners. Oh, it's OK. I've done it before. You just mm -hmm. stick them out the window, and you don't let him charge the baggage. Are you really going to wear it? Yes. I'm going to lead a march on Downing Street. I want to be able to get onto the prints unrecognized. They're bound to arrest you. Yes, I dare say. yourself strong to serve them. It isn't easy. Sometimes it's very hard. Harder than eating porridge. I'm sorry. <laughs> then it's all over. What does porridge matter? As long as you understand and remember. Miss Woody Way. Will you be worth the upbringing? Love and serve. That's all that matters to me. Look at us, this family from the outside. And I came to a conclusion. I think we're well. serious. Yes. Well intentioned, yes. Even quite well informed. Oh, Christopher. But awfully dull. Like. Remember that fearful porridge Mother used to make us eat? Well, that's us. Cold, lumpy, but good for you. Tasteless and terribly dull. Grey pancas porridge. No wonder I was bored. See now why you stayed away so long. Don't say no. Then how dare you? she try to tell me about the problems of working women? Twice a week I'm in that dirty little office registering births and deaths. What does she know of the girls and women who come to me, 14, 13, even 12, for their babies? 
and the father's often their own fathers. Oh, yes. If Christabel or Miss Roper or Miss Gore Booth wants to know how poor women suffer at the hands of men from man-made laws, then let them come with me twice a week to that dirty little office and I'll show them. Then they can preach. Sylvia? Sylvia? Poor child. Here. How long have you been here? Your landlady let me in. I wanted to let you sleep. I wrote to you from Holloway. Wrote? I had no letter. Oh. I sent it through the WSPU office. They didn't pass it on. No, well, they're not very fond of me at the present. Oh, a silly quarrel. If only you'd back Lansbury's policy, vote against the government on everything until we have the vote. We can't. Why not? I didn't think you would ask. Vote with the Tories on every issue. What can a socialist do the thing we are? But you've kept the government in power, Christabel says. Christabel says. Has your mother been to see you since you got out of Holloway? Your Trafalgar Square meeting was a big success. Asquith will give in to you soon. He must. You know the Labour Party's with you. Solid to a man for women's suffrage. Suppose we turn the Liberals out. Do you think the Tories would give you the vote? Know that I want to argue. You've made me suffer. You and your mother. In and out of prison and I was never certain. What a family you are, you pankers. I know your resolution, that's the trouble. That fearful single-mindedness will be the ruin of you all. And you would do it. I know. Sometimes I think it would be a pleasure to you. And if you kill yourself then, what a final light would be lost and gone. I remember the first time I saw you. I ran all the way home from school. I went up the stairs and the library door was open. You were sitting in a big armchair, just as I'd imagined, like the pictures in the Labour Leader. I was strong, like a great tree. I pressed my head against the banisters, just leaning on the stairs. If it was only votes for women, just that and nothing more. It is. No. Listen to me. There's so much more. You know that. All the things your father fought for. The fight for social justice and peace. That's my greatest terror. That war will come. Ordinary working men shedding each other's blood. We must unite the working classes all over Europe before the chance is gone. That's what matters to me. I must be honest. More than votes for women, more than any other thing on earth. What is left if the world is drowned in blood? There's madness in the air. Even your fight, I think, is part of it. I'm 
time. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll go. Sometimes I think the past is better left behind. I only vex you. Your mother would get a card for me saying I would be here this morning. I'm sure she'll come to see you as soon as she's able. Rest, Sylvia. And don't fash yourself about me. Just gang your own gate. That's all. Seems to be the place. Wait for me, my dear. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. I believe my daughter's staying with you. I'm Emmeline Pankhurst. Mrs. Pankhurst? Oh, yes, she is. Thank you. Oh, you must excuse me. I'm at the wash tub. I should have recognized you. Sylvia, it's your mother, dearie. Oh, I recognize you from your photos. Oh, yes. uh, if you go up the stairs to the top, that's where she is. I know she'd like to see you. Thank you very much. I'd come up myself, but you see how I am. No. Miss Pankhurst? Yes. I'm Zelly Emerson, a great admirer. Oh, how do you do? Oh, this is a friend, Mrs. Savoy. Do, how do you do? Oh, oh, Sylvia's right up there. She's been waiting for you. Thank you very much, Miss Emerson. Can you bit oh. bow? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, to manage. Sylvia? Mother? Nothing they haven't done to you. No, 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 no. They never dare to force feed me. The cowards. But you. God, you're so thin. Oh, my splendid one. Brave. True. But we are winning. It won't be long now, I know. I told them at the meeting at the London Pavilion. A few months more, and the spirit of the crowd that followed Sylvia Pankhurst down Whitehall will force the government to act. I read it. I meant it. And then don't ask me how would I know. Asquith is badly rattled. We have them on the run. I came here today quite openly in that WSBU motor car, and I wasn't followed. But that must mean something. Well, I'm off to America again to raise more money. I had to see you before sailing. I would have been here yesterday, only I received a postcard. Yes, and I know. You told me. Yes, well, I didn't want to see him. He knew that. You needn't worry. He won't come again. You... You've had a row? No, but he won't, I know. The suffragette published a vile cartoon of him on Asquith's arm. It's all lies. Why must we make enemies of people who ought to be our friends as if we didn't have enemies enough already? He was my friend as well. I'm afraid he's just one of our lost souls. I sometimes wonder, is it their souls that have been lost? Or ours? Sylvia, what do you mean when you say that? Oh, I don't know. I don't like violence. Look, I've been thinking, couldn't you take a holiday? It's wonderful in Paris. I went there to Christabel after one of my hunger strikes, and 
Oh, I can feel the strength flowing back. And it's so beautiful. <laughs> we had such fun together. I know she'd like to see you and the rest would do you good. Now, wouldn't you like to go? No, I don't want to see her. It wouldn't do any good. Well, think about it. If I'm not in prison, I'd like to go for Christmas. If she wants to see me, she must send for me. And then I'll know. Here they come again. I don't want to be arrested. Not for this. I didn't want to go. They are detectives. <sighs> you see, they're not after you at all. You can sleep. I'm glad it's calm. I'm a rotten sailor. Did you have a good journey? Marta says she's seen you on the films with Charlie Chaplin. She may have done. They had a camera at the free speech meeting in Trafalgar Square. I see you were right, Marta. How clever of you. Now, wait and tell my mother to. I heard your voice. Did you have a good crossing? No trouble? No. Lincoln's and House arranged it for us. They smuggled us into a car and drove us to Harwich. You know Nora Smythe? Yes. The best chauffeurs they ever sent me. She's our financial secretary in the East London Federation. Oh, really? I'm sure you'd like some coffee. Martha's bringing it. Have you had breakfast? Uh, not for me. Coffee would be splendid. Well, that's settled then. This is little dog, Pei. She lives here. Shall we start? I loathe prevarication. Yes, of course. It's a question, really, of clearing things up. We think your East London Federation should become a separate organization. You have different ideas and different methods from our own, so it seems natural. We shall announce this in the suffragette. I suppose a name's the only problem. Unless you choose one for yourselves, you'll be given one. To avoid confusion. I didn't want... How do you feel about it? Well, it's more our members, actually. Nora is here to represent them. They must have reasons. Specifically? Then I would say your attendance at Lansbury's meeting for the release of Larkin. It was totally contrary to WSPU policy. I think we should stay out of Irish politics. Larkin called British soldiers hired assassins. We must be very careful whom we call our friends. Lansbury's a good fellow, of course, but his motto is let them all come. We don't want to be mixed up with him. Also, you have a democratic constitution for your federation. We don't agree with that. But people have Frankly, a right to... Frankly, I don't think a woman's working movement is of any value. That is my idea, of course. But how can it be otherwise? Working women must be the weakest of them. Their lives are hard. Their education too meager for this kind of contest. We want picked women. The strongest and the most intelligent. We want our women to take orders and march in step like an army. In step? Who will be left? Lost souls. The Pethick Lawrences, Keir Hardy, even Lansbury. And we... Blame. You have your own ideas, I know. We don't want that. Mother. Oh, Sylvia, what do you expect me to say? You'll go your own way, you always have. So be it. But to involve the WSPU with Irish politics... Lansbury it's... asked me and follow Lansbury. But don't expect us to follow you, that's all I ask. You go your way and we'll go ours. I will not allow this to become a family argument. Look, you and I are both tired and ill after our time in prison. 
Couldn't we agree on this at least? To go our own ways. Didn't you say that Marta was bringing coffee? Yes. And after we shall drive in the bois. Shall you enjoy that? Besides, your federation appeals for funds. People think it's all part of the same thing. You get donations which might come to us. That's what we say. We know people who have sent money to your headquarters at Lincoln's Inn because of our big demonstrations. And we pay the bill. How much do you want? What do you think would be a suitable income for your federation? It can't be much in a simple way. Lots! All we can raise for our work, the same as you. Fighting for the vote? Yes, among a lot of other things. You see? Will you allow us something? Oh, no, we can't have that. It must be a clean cut. But don't you understand? You have to be separate. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. The government is watching the WSBU. They're hoping for a split. They know divided councils will spell ruin. And we shall have no weakness and no compromise. We must not only be strong, we must appear to be so. Let them say what they will of our intolerance and isolation. This is war. The suffragettes are the advance guard. And they shall stand alone. A glorious isolation. That is our strength. Very well. As you want it. A clean cut. Don't you want to do some shopping while you're in Paris? No, we have to go. Are you angry? We're still sisters, after all, despite our disagreements. How can you, what, do what you do? Issue orders that others will have to carry out. Yes. It's difficult. I have thought about it. There must be someone here, someone they can't touch. Could Mother do? Be impossible. She needs to be in the thick of things in England, challenging the government. To sit alone in Paris dealing with policy matters will be torture to her. So I decided it must be me. She said to me once, Christabel is not like other women, not like you or me. She will never be led away by her affections. She was wrong. It may be true now. Then you've changed. I had to. As the leader, you must be strong. I remember father saying... Father? Say... Another world. Was it? I'm going home. Our paper. <laughs> How do you like that? The name of our paper, the Women's Dreadnought, is symbolic of the fact that the women who are fighting for freedom must fear nothing. This first advance number of our paper is to be sold at a penny. The Women's Dreadnought will be published from Saturday the 4th of April, 1914, as a free weekly journal with a guaranteed circulation of 20,000... Silly, do you think we can? Oh, sure. Then every inch of advertising pays for an inch of news material. How many inches have you sold? Right now, uh, three. Neve's food, some guy's cocoa, and... Lipton's, wasn't it? Yeah. Doesn't seem very much. Look, our Declaration of Independence. Why should we argue about the way we're going to... Am I interrupting? Oh, no, Miss Pankhurst. We're, we're just a bit preoccupied. It's the first issue of our new journal. Yes, I see. Would you mind? I have to speak to Sylvia. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. We we'll use the outer office. I'm coming, Nora.
Well, I've come just in time. Is this a proof? Yes. The Journal of the East London Federation of the Suffragettes. Yes. It's what we're called now. You do realize this is quite impossible. What? To call your group by that name. We are the suffragettes. We always have been. It was the name chosen by our members. I had no part in the decision. Then you should have done. You should have told them that it was out of the question. I couldn't. We are a democratic organization. I do not issue orders to anyone. Besides, what can you possibly object to? The WSPU is not the suffragettes. The word wasn't invented by you. It was the Daily Mail. We adopted it. We've always used it. To pretend anything else is nothing but blind and wicked obstinacy. However, knowing you, I should have expected that. Knowing me? Yes, certainly. It was never any different from the day you were born. You were determined to resist me to your will against mine, even as a little girl, and you've never changed. Even Harry, you tried to turn him against me. Harry. You know you did. Harry! You left him with me. I had to nurse him, bury him. You left him with me when he was dying. To go to America, and you know the reason very well. I had to go to raise the money for his treatment. Would you think I would have left him for any other reason? My son... With me, not her. Christabel. Why not Christabel? Oh, so perfect. She was never obstinate. She always ate her porridge, even thick with lumps enough to make you sick. How could I leave her with Christabel? She can't stand sickness. And Christabel must be considered. Always. Always Christabel. Even here today, you didn't come here for yourself. You came for her. For her, you'd give your life. And there is nothing... Nothing of you left for any other human being. Not in the world. Not anyone. Well, your temper has changed. And don't imagine I can't remember. I suppose I should have realized long ago that you were just jealous. Oh, is it childish? And quite pointless. I have agreed with Christabel that she shall make decisions on militant policy. She is a born politician. If I can follow her, I see no reason why others cannot do the same, especially her own sister. However, that's obviously impossible. Your outburst here has made that very clear. The use of that title by your group is utterly ridiculous. It will lead to endless confusion and distress to everyone, including you, I should imagine. Now, I came here today to ask you to change it, as you won't. I can only warn you of the consequences. We are going to win. If I die for it, we are going to win. Don't... Don't come again. Well, I can assure you, you know I mean it. Yes. You've done it to so many. Goodbye. Well, those are the details. And if the police have stopped us, we're to go on. Whatever happens, no one is to turn back. Of course not. And the East London Federation is asked to join the deputation? No, not that. Well, then I'm sorry, but why are you here? Well, Christopher asked me to... To inform us that we're not wanted. I didn't say that. Sorry? You are wanted, as individuals, but not as a group. I mean, all it means is no banners with your names on it, that's all. And Christabel asked you to come and say this? Yes. She wanted me to come myself. That was good of her. Well, I shall inform our members. I expect some of them will want to come. We have a meeting of our own three days later in Victoria Park. 
For May Day. A workers' demonstration. I expect you'll be busy then. At least I've told you. Best be on my way. Shall you be coming? Yourself, I mean, on the deputation to the king. Hasn't my mother... Hasn't Mrs. Pankhurst told you? Tell me what? No, oh, nothing. No, I shan't be coming on the deputation, nor on any demonstration in the future which involves my mother. Perhaps there's only one place where we will meet again. Only one place? Prison. This is a women's May Day demonstration. We are holding a May Day meeting in Victoria Park. Keep close and keep together. The police must allow us to enter the park. behind the shed. Must unchain you. Where are the keys? The keys to the padlocks. Where are they? Do you think we'd be so foolish as to bring them with us? Break the padlocks. Truncheons. Keep your filthy hands off of me. Oh, steady a bitch. I'll break your wrist. Oh, bastard. Bastard! Not again, for nothing. Next time, what day was I released? May the 30th. Doesn't give us much time. Organize rallies, big ones, not just the members of the Federation. I want all the people to vote freely. How women should get the vote. Don't hurry. You'll tire your voice. Asquith says there's no popular demand for votes for women. We've got to prove him wrong. Each Rally must elect a representative. Representatives of working people to take their demand to the cabinet themselves. He won't receive them. He's refused us twice already. I know. I thought. That's my new plan. What did the doctor say when he saw Zelly? It was a skull fracture. That Bobby must have hit her jolly hard. She's not to take part in any more demonstrations. She has to rest completely. She must go home. I'll make her.
She said she didn't want to see America again until we got the vote. Perhaps she won't. Michigan's a long way. <laughs> yes, it is, rather. What were you going to say about your new plan? I shall tell Asquith in my letter. He must receive the deputation. If not, in or out of prison, I shall fast until death. No, don't say anything. I don't want to argue. I've made up my mind. A fat lot of good in any case, arguing with you. I can't help being stubborn. I always was. Just my luck. Sorry. But you're not to address any meetings. Not for a week at least. What nonsense. Depends on how I go. Thank you all for coming. East London is marching today to the House of Commons to demand the vote for all women over the age of 21. You have elected representatives to form a deputation to the Prime Minister to present that demand. But I have to tell you that he has so far refused to meet them. While he persists in this, I shall hunger strike in or out of prison, if necessary, until I die. I have a feeling here today that I shall never leave you. No more. Go on. You are arrested. No. It's her. I'm all right. She's very weak. Can you manage her? Thank you. We've got a taxi. Home. Then to the House of Commons. We mustn't waste time. Now don't you bother, Sylvia. It's all arranged. told me you were here. Here. You must wait in St. Stephen's Hall till I speak with Asquith. Impossible. I'm not allowed. But you must rest somewhere. Oh, no. We'll be with her. Know what 
I'm doing. Not wasting time. Like a race. Save all to win. I'll speak to Asquith if I have to make them suspend the setting. Don't let anybody move, eh? Sorry, miss, you can't lie there. She's too weak to be moved. Mr. Hardy told us... You had no right to say that. I shall have to ask you to move along. I refuse. I shall consult my senior officer. But I advise you to move along. She can't be moved. Sylvia, I've seen him. Ask with agrees to meet your deputation. Six women on Saturday morning. He's given in. What did I say? No one believed me. You want Sylvia, don't you hear? It's true. Yes. I know. It's a race you're running. I think you'll win. Thank you. Thank you all very much. It isn't over yet. Oh, yes. We've heard the news then. We've ten Some of the deputations here already. Mrs. Watkins wanted to go at once, but I told her it's not till next Saturday. Oh, gracious, there's nothing of you, just skin and bone. May I have a drink of water, please? Oh, you can have the blooming Thames, dearie, if it's your fancy. You've come home. We are the deputation of ladies to see Mr Asquith. We have our appointment. Yes, good morning, ladies. The Prime Minister's waiting for you. Another lovely day. The air may get a little too warm later on. We'll make it warm for him, believe me, if we don't get votes for women. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Asquith will see you now. He should be back soon. Yes. Oh, I wish you'd been there. No. I don't see that Asquith has any cause to love the Pankhurst family. I made it clear in my letter they must be women of the people. He'd rather talk to them. I think he'll patronise them. He'd do that in any case. Yes, he would. I say, there's something I've got to tell you. Oh, a confession. You mustn't rag me. Sorry. What is it? I wrote to your mother while you were in prison. Wrote to her? What for? I knew you wouldn't want it. I was afraid you were going to... You know what. So I asked her to join forces with us. An appeal to Asquith. Just for this once, because of... Well, because of what I just said. What did she say? Dear Miss Smythe, your action does not conform with WSPU policy. As for Sylvia, tell her when she comes out of prison to go home and let her friends take care of her, as Annie Kenny and Mrs. Drummond have done. Yours sincerely, Emmeline Pankhurst.
You shouldn't have written. I didn't understand. I can't. Why should you? She couldn't be so rotten. Telling you to chuck it or let you oh, go. Oh, why did you do it? It wasn't your business. I'm sorry. You I... should have understood in Paris. It's politics and nothing else now. Family matters mustn't be allowed to intervene. They just confuse things. Sorry, I was cross. No. It's my fault. My family sticks together. Well, they row, of course. That's what I mean. I know. I'm jealous. Well, at least there's someone. Listen, it's there. They bring on me palpitations. Never mind that. Now they're waiting for us. Do come in. Just find seats where you can. Oh, come on, Mrs. Jones. Oh, really? Oh, dear. Well, what did he say? Well, he's a nice gentleman. He listened to us very well. Uh, Mrs. Skirr read him his statement, the one that we'd agreed, and then we each told him a bit about ourselves. I'm a brush maker, that's what I said to him. A penny farthing for a brush that takes me two hours to make. And then I laid the brush there on the table for him. Two hundred holes, that's what I said. I do all my work, and I keep my own, and I ought to have the vote for it. He was surprised. You spoke about the poor law? Oh, yeah, chapter and verse. Women driven to the workhouse and their children taken from them. She spoke about that friend of hers at the factory. You know, the one who had the baby in the workhouse. And we told him about the streets, how the children have to play there, and Mrs Diamond's boy being killed by a motor bus, and the strikes, and how we have to do the ferreting. All the same, I think it was what you said, Jess, about your daughter that impressed him most of all. Your daughter? I didn't know oh, you, you had never a... saw her. I wasn't going to talk about it. And then I thought, he's the Prime Minister. He ought to know why I want the vote. From the day that she was born till the day she died, she never combed her own hair. She was mentally deficient and lived till she was 27. Once, when she was taken bad, she went to the Poplar Workhouse. My husband thought he was compelled to let her go, you see. On well, the next day, when I got there, they'd put her in a padded room. Not a room. I asked the doctor why. You've got no voice. That's what he told me. It's not your place to ask her why or wherefore. Only the father has the right to do that. Well, that's the day that I decided. They'd have to give me the vote. So I told him. He gave a promise. What did he say? No, no, not a promise. But he did say we'd put our case to him very well. He did say that. Mm -hmm. And he said he wouldn't argue, but if women had the vote, they'd have it without distinction, same as men. But he said if. Oh, yes. He did say if, I'm sure of that. Well, much virtue in if. If Asquith said it, it's almost a revolution. If. How dare she? She knows our policy. Like Joan of Arc, we'll talk to the enemy, but at the point of a sword. This is exactly what the Liberals wanted, divide and conquer. Their promises are worth nothing. After the election in the next Parliament, what does it matter? They will talk and talk and nothing will be won. Done it now, and you can't put the cat back. But it's not our cat. No, but it's our militancy that got her in there. Would Asquith talk to Sylvia Pankhurst if it weren't for us? Exactly. We'll talk to no one. We'll stick to our policy. No negotiation. As my editorial for the suffragette, I've said it there again. I want you to go back tonight with instructions for more violence, more demonstrations. A climax right up to the opening of the autumn sessions. So the government dare not call the election before we have the vote. And I know that it will happen. It must be now. Only my dearest sister would keep her hands off. Sisters. What? 
You know, more like sisters and chalk and cheese. Knew that right from the start. I had to find out which one was for me. It should have been hers, shouldn't it? The champion of the working woman. I never thought about it. Why me? Wasn't choosing. I knew. Always. I just knew. She says she wants a meeting. What shall I answer to this letter? Send a telegram, not to her, to Nora Smythe. Address it, Smythe, 28 Ford Road, Stepney, London. Just saying, tell your friend not to come. How many words is that? Twelve. No signature. They'll know who it's from. Militancy will continue. The militant women say to the government, when you give us votes, we will give you peace. No militant will believe a single word the government may say. No militant will trust a single promise the government may make. When you give us votes, then we will give you peace. How long? How long? We will give you peace. Mr. Asquith imagines that we're going to start knitting socks and rolling bandages, then Mr. Asquith will be wrong. <laughs> Quite this right. This is our chance to show that women can serve equally with men. Yes. But not one of us shall lift a finger until Asquith stops his war against <laughs> women. They must stop torturing our prisoners. No, wait. We can demand the release of all our prisoners so they can serve their country. Yes. And if that's done... Then they shall see what our army can do. <laughs> oh, my Joe, yes. We have a lot to do, Ethel. Yes. Christopher must come here to Normandy. Why? Well, I need to talk to her. And then we must get to England as soon as possible. Yes. Ethel, do you realize? What? If it's war, the government will have to let Christopher come home to England. They must. Yes, I suppose they must. Oh. They need us, Ethel. They need us. And my Christopher. Thank you. It's splendid to be with you again. Welcome home, Christabel. <laughs> Thank you. Home is where your heart is. And it is home that we must now defend. I say we because the longer this war lasts, the more certain it is that it will sweep away the suicidal folly which has made this country into two opposing camps. Enfranchised men and voteless women. But our task now is not to fight for the vote, but to make sure the British Empire will survive. We have ended our militant campaign against the government, and all our prisoners have been released. we proclaim an overriding need of a vigorous national defense against the German peril. 
As militant women, you must back this war. And you must ensure that men back it too, in every possible way. We have no time for pacifist cant or sloppy thinking. No time for cowards. Militant women have been at war and they know that only uncompromising determination and self-sacrifice will bring success. Well, we demand of this government universal conscription. Military conscription for men, industrial conscription for women. The women of this nation are standing to attention. And the call is this, leadership and patriotism. Leadership, leadership, and again, patriotism. The woman's cause is that of Belgium and of all the people who are looking to us to lift the fear of Prussia from their hearts. Good luck. I can see our country's going to need us. No, Flora, if there are many like you, God help the Germans. Oh, oh, we've already <laughs> taught them to fear the kilt. Wait till they see the petticoat for a time. Don't forget that stop it at all. We'll rally the men. That's right. The speech was wonderful. It made me cry. Did I? I don't like crying. It's not the end, it's a beginning. I like the war we have. <laughs> well, of course the WSPU goes on, you can assure us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but now we have an even greater cause to fight for. Yeah. But England. Oh, yeah. But good luck to you. Oh, oh thank, you. thank you. We're thinking of renaming the paper and calling it the Britannia. It's a good thing. Oh, so, so you see, all our members. Are <laughs> that. We won't forget you. New jobs for women, driving buses, making munitions. That's right. Yeah. Now don't forget, we demand the right to serve. We yeah. demand service for all. We demand conscription Good. and white feathers for the cowards. Yes, always. <laughs> Sylvia, don't bash yourself about me. Sometimes I think the past is best forgotten. I only vex you. I remember father. The things he stood for, the fight for social justice and for peace. We women, we women whom conscription cannot touch, but who love liberty and hate coercion, holding that war is an inhuman wrong. We must oppose conscription with all our force. Help must come from the rank and file of the labor movement, the miners, the engineers, the dockers. If they down tools, they can protect their weaker brethren. We are told that we went into the war to fight Prussian militarism. Refuse to allow Prussian militarism to be established by a British government at home. We are living in a new world. We must all be new men and new women. We demand of this government universal obligatory national service for men and women alike. That's my greatest terror, that war will come. What is left of the world is drowned in blood. Even your fight, I think, is part of it. No. Right to 
expect another man to do the fighting for him. We must all play our part. Mothers, wives, and daughters. Each week, 25,000 men must be recruited. And none of these may hope to live a year. Wives and mothers, do you realize what this means? It means that the voluntary recruits have joined a suicide club. Regarding the meeting in Trafalgar Square, I strongly repudiate and condemn Sylvia's foolish and unpatriotic conduct. I regret I cannot prevent her from using the name. Make this public. Leadership. 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 Patriotism. I remember father. Father? Another world. Sylvia. It's so much. So much. What are you doing, you two? Come on! No. Thank you. Miss Woodyway, will you be worth the upbringing? And so, my friends, we will build a future city most beautiful to see where women walk in public processions in the street, the same as the men, where they enter the public assembly and take places, the same as the men, where the city of the faithless friends stands, there the great city stands. for women by our parliamentary correspondent. We've done it at last. You, oh, Minister. What ladies, oh, please. What? Look, I asked you to join me at breakfast by way of a small celebration, and I should hate to argue with you so early in the day. Then you must choose your words more carefully. What the government has done for women we regard as nothing more than our due, for the help that we've given you with the war effort. We needed a strong government, and you provided it. That is why we backed you against Asquith. Yes, I'm aware of it. Now, that is why I had hoped we could maintain this alliance in the future. Support by your women's party for a continuation of the present coalition government after the war. No, Prime Minister. Miss Bankhurst? We will not support coalition candidates. We will support our own. Women? Standing for Parliament? Exactly. Haven't we earned the right? Think of it. Fourteen years since I sat in that little room in Nelson Street with Christabel and a few others and formed the Women's Social and Political Union. We thought then we'd have the vote in two or three years. Instead of which... Yes, Mother. Instead of which, women have had to fight a battle longer and almost as bitter as that of the present war. Not four years, Prime Minister, 14. And we have our role of honor, those who have died, those who have resisted their persecutors almost to the point of death. And if you yourself have not fasted to the point of death, don't think too lightly of it. Well, now, did we do all that, do you think, to vote for a parliament composed entirely of men, women, can change the face of this country as men have never done. We want nothing to do with the party politics men have created. Karl Marx was a man considered the tragedy of Russia. Well, well, now, I don't see why it can't be done. We could have a bill by Christmas enabling women to stand as parliamentary candidates. All I would hope, all that I should hope in that case, is that your candidates will support the government 
along with candidates from all the other parties who accept the need for such a coalition, a national government. Yes, Prime Minister. You can be sure of that. Then we'll support each other. Not only votes for women, we're voting for them. Now, let me see. Can I predict who will be the first to stand? The woman most supremely fitted for the role. Well, there can be only one. No, Prime Minister. But surely... No, not I. We shall present nine candidates. And I shall be campaigning for my daughter. Christabel. Who else? A revolutionary session. Do they really say that? Yes. The new Franchise Act gives the vote to many millions of women over 30 and to every seaman and soldier of 19. The nation has watched the enactment of this measure without excitement because public attention is naturally centered on the war. But it has long felt that the enfranchisement of women was both necessary and just. Well, they certainly kept quiet about it, didn't they? Daily Mail did, yes. We have the vote now, some of us. When you think what we did for it, ready to die, some did. And now, it's not just the vote that matters, it's how we vote, with open, progressive minds. I wish the way in which we fought could be continued. Now the vote is won. Do you see? Yes. Very well. What else can we teach people? We went to war, and won, and never killed an enemy. And when you think of all the years we fought, that's something to remember. Hate can unite us. But so did friendship. To the dear departed, all of us. Days that are weary, days that are dreary, toil and pain. 